Good morning, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. Today, I want to do a video for you about the commandments of Jesus Christ. You know, when we read in the scripture, Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. The natural question that comes up in the mind of a new Christian is, Well, what are his commandments? And this is good and right that those who are in the bride of Christ seek to please their husband. That we want to know what it is our husband wants so that we can please him. Now, I could not possibly tell you every commandment that is found in Scripture. For of a truth, there are many things that are commanded to us to do, and many things that are commanded unto us not to do. The simple way to view this, though, is what Jesus Christ himself said about this. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this is that question, is it not? What good thing can we do so that we can inherit eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So Jesus first is addressing this man, saying that it's not about anything other than worshiping God, and there is one God. And, of course, God the Father fully dwelled in Jesus Christ the Son. But what he was calling people's attention to here in the scripture when this is written, that, that sometimes people come to a, a minister of Jesus Christ, someone who's teaching from the Word of God, and they try to flatter them and tell them, you know, you know, you're very, you know, I love your uh, ministry and please uh, tell me what good thing I must do. And the first thing that we must do is obey God. And this means obey his gospel. So there is no entering into the kingdom of God with your own righteousness. Entering into the kingdom of God and, and pleasing God first comes from accepting the gift of salvation that came through his son. So Jesus Christ, the son, shed his innocent blood at the cross, and he is the only way into the kingdom. And this is a provision that is given to everyone by God. And we do so because we want a relationship with the Father. The Father is in the Son, but we have to remember that there's no way unto the Father except through the Son. So both principles are necessary to recognize that there is one God and that we don't want to uh, mistake our own righteousness for the righteousness of God, which was provided in the sacrifice. So when Jesus laid down his, his life it's so that we could have his righteousness dwelling in us, and there is no other way to be righteous. So if someone wants to know what good thing they need to do to enter the kingdom, the first principle that they need to understand is that that comes from God in the provision of his son, Jesus Christ. So in the second part of verse 17, Jesus Christ says, But, and if, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? So the man then said, which commandments should I do? And this is funny because, of course, we do all the commandments. We want to be without spot. And if we allow any sin into our life, we are then unclean. So this is an interesting question. Jesus said, in answer to him, he said, Thou shalt do no murder, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and 
thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So this is, of course, the the what we recognize when we try to obey the law without obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we recognize deep down inside in our heart that even if we're trying very hard to keep the commandments as con as written in the Ten Commandments in the law, that we're really not able to fully do that, that it's our own righteousness then. And there is no one who attains eternal life by applying the law to their life without Jesus Christ, that we want the righteousness of Jesus Christ, of him dwelling in us, so that the law of God is written on our hearts, and then we can be obedient to him fully. So let's read his answer about, the young man answered, What lack I yet? Jesus said, said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. What Jesus is saying here is, in order to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, one has to be willing to give up what they have. This includes their material possessions, family members, anything that could get in the way of serving Jesus Christ. It means to renounce all and seek to follow him. There is... You know, in, in the world these days, there's the idea that that Jesus Christ wants Christians to have all the things of this world, and this is not true. When we love God, we keep his commandments. When we follow Jesus Christ, we follow him in every single way. So what are the commandments? What does it mean to renounce all? Well, First of all, we want to understand the idea of being perfect. Because Jesus mentioned that here. He said, if thou wilt be perfect. And basically what he said about being perfect was to let go of your own ideas, put all that aside, and give, that, give away to everyone else. Think of others rather than yourself. And then follow Jesus. So it's about renouncing your own ideas and your own trusting in the things of this world. And instead, to follow Jesus Christ, it means being willing to follow him no matter what. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him. This is talking about overcoming the the um, the Antichrist and the system of this world, the the beast, the mark of the beast. So how do we overcome that? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. In other words, by being baptized in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and filled with the Holy Ghost. There is only one way to enter the kingdom water and spirit and the way that we apply the blood of jesus christ to our own life is to be baptized in his name water and spirit so and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their life their lives unto the death so the way that we overcome the world is we renounce the world, first of all. And we renounce the world and lay down our lives in death by being baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, as written of in Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. So as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So we are buried with him in baptism. Our old man is dead. And 
we put everything aside, our, everything that we believed before, all our own ideas about what's valuable, and we got rid of all that stuff, and now we follow him. And so, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So we overcome evil by telling the truth of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, and we testify of Jesus Christ. This is a commandment. Jesus said that whosoever is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of him. So when we speak the truth about Jesus Christ, many people will hate us. But when we do so, we have heavenly treasure. This is what it means to not love our lives unto the death. It is not popular these days at all to tell the truth of God's word, to speak the truth of Jesus Christ. People call you hateful, they call you judgmental, they revile you, and ultimately they may want to kill you. And still, a Christian who is loyal to Jesus Christ does what he did and walks as he walked. So let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. So Jesus Christ walked in this world speaking the truth in love and they murdered him for it. And Christians are willing to do this also. This is how we overcome Satan. We don't overcome Satan by getting weapons together and stockpiles of food and, and defending our flesh. We overcome Satan and his systems by speaking the truth even when it's not popular and being willing to lay down our lives in love for Jesus Christ and for the brethren. It's a very powerful thing to know that we have heavenly treasure. We have an eternal inheritance. Our kingdom is not of this world. As Jesus said, as Jesus said, when Pilate was interviewing Jesus Christ and he was on trial before Pilate, Pilate said to him, he said, "What you know, are you a king? And he said, my kingdom is not of this world, lest my servants would, else my, pardon me, else my servants would fight. So we don't fight in a carnal way for the kingdom of God. The way we fight is we speak the truth even when it's not popular. And to know the truth, of course, we have to abide in the word. What does it mean to be perfect? We read in the scripture in many places that we're commanded to be perfect. What does that mean? Does that mean that we're perfect in every single thing that we do? Well, let's consider this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. And we read here the words of Jesus Christ. He said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So what does this mean? Well, in order to understand that, we have to un we have to look a little bit back and read in the scripture what he was referring to, the context. So, let's um, let's start in verse forty one. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. In other words, go with him two miles. To him that ask, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them, which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. 
for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So this is a reference to the manifestation of divine love in a Christian, that we don't think about our own selves. We don't care if people hate us for speaking the truth, because without the truth, how can they repent? Without hearing the word of God, how can they obey the gospel? And while many will revile us and persecute us and say all manner of evil against us falsely, there are some that will hear. And so we speak the truth in love. This is the perfection that Jesus Christ was referring to. And we also know that Jesus said that love fulfills the law and that when we're considering the law, so thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit murder, thou shalt not steal, and so forth, that really what this means is that when we don't do things like that, we're manifesting love. But we want to love without dissimulation. We want to love without hypocrisy. So let's read about that in uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you, the words of Jesus Christ speaking here, that for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this is talking about religious hypocrisy. So it's when people want their own righteousness by the works of the law, rather than having the righteousness of Jesus Christ dwelling in them, that makes the law of God written in their heart. And they love God and their neighbor with sincerity and not with hypocrisy. This is something that is crucial to obeying the commandments of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was the first one to say, don't call me good. Remember that there is only one good, your Father in heaven. That is God. And we don't want to mistake making ourselves righteous to be the point. When we're commit, commanded to be perfect, it's talking about being perfect in love, in loving God and loving our neighbor. Let's turn now to the book of Matthew, chapter 22, and let's begin in verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So love is the fulfillment of the law. And to love God with all your heart, so we read here, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This means that we love the word of God and hold to the word of God even when it's not popular. It doesn't mean 
that God loves sin. It doesn't mean that sinners are somehow going to enter into the kingdom of heaven because God is love. What it means is that those who love him, love him entirely and serve him even when it's not popular. To love one's neighbor as oneself isn't to give assent to their sin or tell them that God loves them anyway. That is very unloving because someone who, who believes something like that then is going to continue in their sin and end up in the lake of fire. So obviously that's not a loving thing. Perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. So we, we know that we are, when we are made perfect in love that we're not afraid to tell the truth just because someone might crucify us. As a matter of fact, we walk every day giving our life in sacrifice. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So it's just natural and normal that every single day a Christian follows the commandments contained in Scripture regardless of what other people think. And that doesn't mean that we don't listen to counsel if someone thinks we're off the path. But what it does mean is that we love God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our soul, and our strength. And so even when it's unpopular, we speak the truth in love. Let's turn now to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And let's read verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. This means that a Christian's life is fully devoted to serving God and obeying Jesus Christ. And of course that begins with obeying the gospel and then is in that we speak our testimony we speak of what Jesus Christ has done for us to the world because that is a loving thing to do. Whether or not they like it is irrelevant. Whether or not they hate us is irrelevant because our treasure is in heaven and we are serving the eternal king who has an eternal kingdom and the things of this world are quickly passing away. When we want to know the commandments of Jesus Christ, we can begin in the Sermon on the Mount. So Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7 is a good place to begin. But we really want to read the entire Bible because there are many, many things that you will see for yourself if you search the scriptures to know what the Lord requires of you. You see, it's not about getting a list and adhering to the list. That is the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Rather, it's about obeying Jesus Christ and having him dwell inside of us because we are his. And then we have his law written on our heart, which means that we love the Lord our God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our soul and our strength, and our neighbor as ourself. And then we will do no evil 
because we are fully indwelled by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. This is the difference between the righteousness of the law and the righteousness in Jesus Christ. So I, I pray that this message has been helpful to you and you're seeking to understand how to obey the commandments of Jesus Christ and what they are. For of a truth, what he wants is for you to love him. And one way that you can demonstrate that is to spend time with him in his word. I remain here for you. If you have a question, feel free to email me or to email me with a comment or with a conversation that you might want to have about something else in particular. But the comment section for, for right now is not open for uh, striving and debate. And for a season, it's been put on my heart to ask people to communicate with me if they have a comment or question in uh, email format. Because of a truth, I don't want to make a mistake in how I answer someone simply because I have not had enough of a conversation with them to know what their situation is. If you want to make a comment, I will see it. So if you want to encourage me or say that this message blessed you or something like that, feel free to comment and I will receive that. But of a truth, those kinds of things are also best done in private um, because I it's not about me. It's about the word of the Lord. And while I appreciate encouragement like anyone needs encouragement, I... I uh, want all the glory to go to Jesus Christ and not to me. All right, then I remain here for you. And uh, may the word of God go forth today and bless many. In Jesus' name, amen.